please tell Zachary and I, discuss with me anytime. I'll go on his channel for you. Yeah. And, you, and even though you see Uthman and Zakir making mistake after mistake, and you don't yeah, care? You, no, exactly. You know, when they... You uh, don't care they make mistake? Words, oh, you know, this Zakir Naik, he, he shows uh, Prophet Muhammad is mentioned, and he shows that word from me, John. Right? You're kidding me. I read right? it in context, and it says, Jesus said, I will send him. Yes. And so, so Jesus sent Muhammad? That, that him, right? So Jesus sent Muhammad? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's contradicting. So my so point to you, Shah, like you're, you're saying it. Why are you impressed by these people that can you see they make no sense and they embarrass themselves? I still don't get it. Why I'm still, because I want you. I never what? saw any better Christian uh, person than you. You know, when I started, uh, I used to like be very disrespectful, disrespectful and stuff to Christians. But after, you know, listening to your lectures, I said, Obviously, you know, Allah has said very good things about Christians in Quran too. Allah said, you know, you, when you will see Christians reading my scripture, reading, uh, you reciting this and they will, Christians, when they listen to the Quran, you know, tears flow from their eyes because they recognize this is the word of the Lord. You know why they cry? Because they are, they do not have arrogance. Can Allah I tell you why they cry? Thing. Yeah. I'll tell you the real story if you read the commentators. You're referring to Surat Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 80 to 83. And by the way, yeah. I do thank you that you're honest enough to say good things about me, that you think I'm the best Christian that's debating. But to be honest, may the Lord Jesus bless you for your kind words and bring you to the truth and show you how much he loves you. But may the Lord Jesus save me from pride and arrogance. I am far from the best, and it's not about being the best. It's not about me being the best. It's about... I'm saying you are best in my eyes. Well, you know what? I pray that you see through your eyes the true Jesus and fall in love with the true Jesus as your savior because to see me as the best in your eyes won't save you. But once your eyes start seeing who the real Jesus is, that will save you. So may the you Holy Spirit... I, I, you know why I fearlessly am a Muslim? Because I believe even if, you know, God forbid, it's my faith and I shouldn't believe like this. Yeah. Even if my Islam turns out to be false, I believe that I will be protected from hell because I How? love Jesus. But you, which Jesus you love? No, I will. I will ask to. I will ask to Jesus if he turns out to be Son of God. I will say, well, how could I have believed in you when the uh, Quran was revealed? Because Jesus would say, just like you expected people to believe in Islam, even though they had their own books and traditions, just like you expected Christians to follow the Quran, even though they had the Bible, then that means I'm going to use that same measure against you. You expect Christians to read Quran and believe it's a miracle and become Muslim. Well, I expect you to read my Bible and believe my Bible and follow me. But it's very different. See, the Bible, exactly. you know, you guys, you know, you guys are very different to us Muslims. We Muslims, you know, we have a uh, very fearing of Allah. You know, we fear Allah. What fear but Allah, guys... Nasha? What are you talking about? When you have people who are, I'm not saying all Muslims, thank God, you're not like that. When you have people like ICE or Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram who follow the Sahaba and when they go attack people, they imprison people, they behead people, they then rape captives. And then you had your prophet doing muta, which the Shia say it's still, still a practice today, but the Sunnis say it's abrogated. How is this fearing Allah when you justify such immorality? Uh, I understand all of that. When I honestly, I didn't read quran at the time when i started hearing you guys saying this what is this is this written in my book when i read it i was like there has to be something you know uh this can't be like this so this is why i started learning uh everything that you guys point out that are wrong in islam and, and I did we ever I lie saw... whenever i quote some quran hadith did i lie or was it there it was there okay so uh, this is why i know if we keep praying for you you will come to worship Jesus as your Lord and Savior. May he even give you dreams and visions because you're very honest. You just admit every time yeah. you, Sam, said something, it was there. You never lied about it, right? Uh, yeah. Good. Definitely. That's why I took you seriously. That's why took you took me seriously. seriously. And that's why I was like, why can't these Muslims, you know, they love Allah so much. Come and defend. I stopped defending my Allah and Prophet. You can't defend lies. That's the point. You're answering your own question. You can't defend lies. The truth doesn't need defending. It stands out by itself. Now, when I, you know, when I, you guys have prepared Christians so well, even if I would have tried to 
you know, explain them my Quran. Okay, you claim your Quran has beautiful things. What about this uh, 424? And I'm like, shut up. Okay, I want you to repeat, Christians, the mouth of this young man, pray for him. Confirmation, what I keep telling you, study the material. You just said we prepared the Christians so well, right? Yeah. So I want them to hear from you because you're a Muslim saying this and may the Lord Jesus bring you to him. You're saying if these Christians were to study these sessions that we do and read our articles, they'll be too prepared for Muslims, right? Yes, of course. Do you hear it now, guys? Why I get on your case and say, listen, be attentive. Don't be distracted. Make sure you understand these points because they're irrefutable because your God has given you weapons that cannot be destroyed. You heard it from this young man who's being honest. Now, you know his honesty means the spirit is tugging at his heart. So pray for him. I want to ask some questions. Go ahead. About if I can answer you, go ahead. Uh, why did Jesus die for sin? Because God said clearly, he says, when you sin, break my command, you die. Okay. But God's love for mankind is so great that when he gives his word, he doesn't break it. So man sinned. So now either God gives man the punishment he deserves, they all die, or God in his love for man can forgive. But here's the thing. Even if he forgives, a debt is still owed. Here's my point. I was saying earlier, if you smash my car, just give you a very mm -hmm. bad example. I have to give you an example. Okay. You an analogy. You smash my mm -hmm. car and you beg me to forgive you because you can't afford it. I forgive you. So you're forgiven, but my car is still smashed. It's still going to cost me to fix it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When you sin, you're not sinning against something or someone other than God. You're offending God. You're offending okay. God. You're offending his justice and holiness. So God is showing okay. you, look, even though I am holy and just, I am also loving and merciful. And I want to forgive you. But I don't want you to think forgiveness is cheap. Because if I just forgive you, you're going to think forgiveness is cheap. And when you sin, there's it's no big deal. I want to show you how horrendous and evil your sin against me is. I said, if you sin, you must die. Why death? Because who's the source of life? Who is life? Uh, God, right? Yeah. When you disobey God, you can't remain in his presence, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you're not in his presence, that means you're not in the presence of life. So if there's no life, what does that mean? If there's no life, what do you have in an absence of life? Death, right? Death. Death. God is life. When you sin, sin is disobeying God. God does not allow the disobedient to be in his presence. But if you're not in his presence... That means you're not in the presence of life. That means now you're present in death. I uh, Okay, now I understand that. So what's but, the point? God's point is okay. to sin is to offend me. To offend okay. me means you can't dwell in my presence. If you can't dwell in my presence, that means you won't be present in life because I am life. But when you disobey me, you can't dwell in my presence. That means you can't dwell in the presence of life. That means now you'll be present in death. But I love you too much to allow you to remain in death. Therefore, you have offended me. And because you've offended me, a debt is owed to me. You must undo the offense, but you can't do it. So I will do it for you to show you how evil disobedience is to me. Because if I just forgive you for any mistake, you will think forgiveness is cheap. Okay. Right? Okay. But when it costs God something to forgive you, then it makes you appreciate him more and love him more. Wow. This is what it costs you to forgive me. So sinning against you is not cheap. Because to forgive me, it costs you your life in my place. And uh, doesn't that make you love him I, more? I understand your point. You see?